Everything is about this Christ. And what you read time and time again is that Jesus has one call for us and He says, follow Me. He asks us to follow Him. And I think, what does He mean by that, to follow Christ? I mean, does He, does he really mean to follow Him exactly the way that He led His life while He was on the earth? Does He ask us to follow Him through all the adversities and the trials? I mean, because when you read about what Christ did in this book, you see that He endured some pretty heinous things. I mean, He was persecuted and He was flogged and He was beaten and He was hung on a tree to die. And He couldn't mean for us to follow Him there, right? can't be what He meant. I mean, does He even have the right? Does this Christ even have the right to call us to follow Him? Does He have the right to call us to endure those same types of things? I want to answer those questions by just kind of putting those questions into perspective. And we read about this Christ in the Bible. We read that in the beginning, He was there. And He created the heavens and He created the earth and He created all the stars. And he created everything that's on the earth. He created all the animals. And he created every organism and living being. And He created you and He created me. It was God that created everything. And then He gave everything that He created on this earth to us. But everything that He created was not enough. And we turned our backs on Him and we went our own selfish ways, wanting to appease our flesh instead. So by that attempt to go our own way, we just brought in sin into this world and condemnation and God's wrath. But God, He in an effort to bring us back to Himself, He came to this earth. Think about that. The God who created everything came to this tiny speck of dust in His cosmos. And He humbled Himself to become a man. And then He didn't come to this earth to conquer and rule us. He came to serve us. Not only did He come to serve us, but then He died for us because only in His blood can salvation come. And not only did He come and serve and die, but then this God, He conquered death and He rose from the grave and He is now back reigning in heaven as King of kings over everything that He has created. So does this Jesus, does He have the right to ask you and me to follow Him? I don't know about you, but I think absolutely He does. He has the right to ask of us whatever it is He wants to ask of us. God's story, this story is the most unbelievable and beautiful story that has ever been comprised. And I think about how do most of us as American Christians, how do we respond to this God who has done everything for us? Do we give Him a couple of hours on Sunday? Do we pray to Him every once in a while when it's convenient? Do we maybe read our Bibles as we're falling asleep at the end of a long day and we can barely keep our eyes open? Most people who profess this very God respond to His salvation, the salvation that He has given to us by giving Him whatever we have left. If in fact there is anything left to give. Why has He done all of this? Why has He brought us into this story, His story? Why has He breathed the breath of life into your nostrils? God's reason for creating us has never changed. He has created us to enjoy Him for all eternity. When Christ was on this earth, He created a path. He created the path, the only path, the one that He walked. And it's only the path that Christ walked, the only one that He trod and that He laid out 
that brings us back to the Father. I believe when He is laying out this path and He looks back at us and He says, follow Me. I think that that is the calling that encompasses all other callings. If you want to be a better father, a better wife, or a a better husband, or a better mother, or a better child, all those things are encompassed in that calling to follow Christ the way that He has called us to follow Him. Jesus says that He is the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through Him. And it is because Jesus is the way. He's the way. Doesn't it make sense that He looks back at us and says, follow Me. Follow Me because I am the way. I am the way. I am convinced that our entire existence, the reason why we are here, is to follow this God that created us. Do you believe that you are here to follow Christ? Christians, do you believe that that's why you are here, is to follow Him who made you? And if the answer to that is yes, then the follow-up question is how are you doing? Are you following Him? Are you following Jesus the way that He has called you to follow Him? If you're unsure as to what following Christ looks like, He does a good job at painting a pretty vivid picture. One that I think most of us don't, we don't want to accept it. We don't, we don't want to think that following Christ could, could possibly demand so much of us. But Jesus says in Luke 9.24, For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. In Matthew 10.37, Jesus says, Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Matthew 16.24, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And this is all stuff that Jesus said. I'm not making this up. Is he serious? When he says these things, is he serious? Does he really require that we give up everything to follow him? Does he really demand that we love him over our own families? The people that we love more than anything here on this earth. Does he really mean that we have to be willing to to carry our crosses, our burdens, even if carrying that cross means carrying it to death. Is that what he really meant? As I look at the way we live our lives, I think it can't be. I mean, it can't be, right? Because there aren't very many, if, if there are very few Christians that actually live their lives like this. Right? There's, there's very few Christians that would follow Christ to this extreme. So that's, that's what we do. We call it extreme. Man, if, if someone is willing to, to put Christ first and follow Him no matter what, that, that's, I mean, that's a little extreme, right? That's a little extreme. I, I give Him what I can when I can, but let's not go crazy, okay? We relabel it. We reprioritize. This is the thing. Everything our God does is extreme. Everything He does is extreme. Everything Jesus did when He came here was extreme. How is it then that we have convinced ourselves that we can follow Christ, this extreme Christ, with lives that are not extreme? In most cases, not even a little bit. Do you get tired sometimes of wondering if you truly are God's child? Because 
You profess His name, but you look so much like the world around you. And if you do profess Christ, but you look more like the world, that's a legitimate worry to wonder if you are His. We are supposed to look like this Creator. Do you ever just dream of what God could do with your life if you just gave Him everything? If you gave it completely to Him? I've dreamed for years and years about what God can do or would do in my life if I'd just be willing to relinquish everything to Him. And I have, I've stood up here time and time again and I've, I've preached sermons on how you and, and, and I and we as Christians should conduct ourselves as we follow Christ. And then I get down from the pulpit and I go and I, I, I continue to live my life putting God somewhere deep in my priorities. But it's certainly not close to the first. And I want to, because I have the opportunity to, just apologize to you. I I am sorry to, to you. I am sorry to my wife for living that way. I'm not done myself or this body or my family any service. I've done them a huge disservice by not living out this truth. I want to today, as I go into this new year, commit myself completely to God. Completely. I'm so tired of trying to hold on. I'm tired of trying to live for this world and for the Creator of this world at the same time. I am so tired. I don't know about you, but I'm so tired of mediocrity in this Christian walk. It's not what God calls us to. I'm so tired of going through the motions. I just I want to be so done with being content at the absolute bare minimum that we give to God. I want to be done with having a heart that is divided, a heart that seeks the approval of men rather than the approval of the Son of Man. It doesn't make any sense. If every believer in this church would commit themselves to following Christ the way that He has called us to follow Him, can you imagine what this body of believers would look like? If this church, if we individually would place Christ at the top of our priorities, before our families, before our careers, before our own desires, our own selfishness, if we would courageously step out and follow Him, no matter what that looks like, can you imagine what God, what He longs, what He longs to do in your life if you would only take that step out and give it all to Him? We are supposed to be Fierce warriors for God. We are supposed to be fierce warriors for God. And what keeps us from that? Our fear? God did not instill a spirit of timidity in any of us. He has given you power by His Spirit far beyond anything that you can comprehend. Anything that I can comprehend. And what are we fearing? Realistically, what are we fearing? Are you fearing death? Are you fearing physical persecution? Are we fearing that our our families might face those very same things? Possibly, maybe one day. But here in America, that's not, let's be honest, that's not what we're fearing. Okay? We're fearing, uh, we might have to be uncomfortable. We might have to come out of our comfort zones. We might have to stop watching TV shows that we love. We might have to put God before that. We might have to not put so many hours into work. We might have to reprioritize some things. That's what we really fear if we're honest with ourselves. We fear letting go of putting us at number one and replacing that with God.
I wish we could wrap our, our minds around this. Because not only are we not bringing glory to God by living for Him, but we are missing out. We are missing out so much. The thing is, we are already on God's championship team. He's already, he's already won. The trophy is already in the case. He's given you the opportunity to be on His team and to partake and, and, and to play in the game. He's called you to get off of the bench and get into the game. Not because He needs you for anything. Again, the trophy is already His. He's given us the opportunity to partake in that glory and the blessing that He wants to bestow upon us. But what do we do? We'd rather just sit on the bench. We're content with just sitting on the bench because the thing about sitting on the bench is there's no glory in sitting on it, but there's no pressure either. Right? There's, there's no pressure. There's no responsibility. There's no sacrifice. There's no call for any kind of effort. So that's what we do. We sit. And God looks at these lives that we have and I can only imagine how sad it must make Him when, when we're not willing to get off of that bench. I think of, I was trying to think of some, some, uh, some producers, some movie producers that are pretty famous, and George Lucas is the only one that came. Is there, is there any others? Who? Aaron Spelling. So George Lucas and Aaron Spelling, they come up to you and they say, we have just comprised and written the greatest script ever. This guaranteed is going to be the best movie ever in all history. And we have a character that, that we have set aside and you are the perfect person to play this character. Again, in the greatest movie ever by some of the greatest uh, people that write movies, the greatest directors ever. Okay, they could They could choose anybody to cast for these positions, but they want you to be here and fulfill this position. We say, I mean, don't, do you have one of those, uh, do you need any extras? You know, that, you know, the people who just walk around and look around. Can I just be that instead? I mean, isn't that crazy? Just on a worldly, uh, stupid analogy that I have. Isn't that crazy though? But that is what we do every time. We don't physically get up and answer this call to follow God. We don't fulfill that, that character, that position that He has designed specifically and specially for you. As Christians, as His. We'd rather be an extra instead. And again, I think that we want to be an extra because with an extra, there's no expectations. Right? There's no, there's no lines that we have to memorize. There's no scripts. There's no crazy director asking us to perform stunts. So we'd rather be an extra. And if that is your heart and you, you think of this and you say, you know, I think I would rather be an extra. I think, I think I, I'm more comfortable. I would rather be an extra. I just want to challenge you and remind you that no extra's names have ever appeared on the credits at the end of the movie. Right? There's, there's no glory in that. And we, we want to do everything we do for the glory of God, but He has given us that opportunity to partake and share in that glory. And every time we sit still, we miss out. There is no glory in hiding in a foxhole. And there is no glory in sitting on the bench. And there is no glory in being an extra. It's just the way that it is. As I say this and I, and I talk about these things, a person that continues to come to my mind is Bonnie Garcia. And a lot of you know Bonnie and she served faithfully as a member of this church for years and years. And if you, if you knew her, you know her, you know the heart that she has for God. And she worked her entire life until she got to the point in her life where this, this world around her says, now it's time to take that little nest egg. It's time to retire. It's time. You're in the season of your life to focus in on yourself. 
I mean, you would say rightfully so. I mean, you've been working hard so long, it's time to just relax and, and give yourself some pampering for once in your life. But Bonnie, because God called her to, she sold everything she had and she followed God. She sold her house and her car. She got rid of all of her possessions. Everything that would hinder her or keep her from following God the way that He had called her to, she got rid of it all. She served as a missionary in India for two years. And now she's in between mission fields and she's faithfully awaiting God's next call, the next move. And I, I look at that life and I look at that, that step of faith, especially just in the timing of her life, you know, where she could have chosen to just relax. And I think if God calls me to leave the comforts of, of the United States and travel to a foreign land to, to profess His name, would I do it? And I pray through His grace and power, the answer to that is yes. You have to ask yourself the very same thing. If He called you to do these things, would you? So am I saying that in order for us to be true Christians, to true followers of Christ, we have to sell everything we have and we have to live the rest of our days in pain and poverty? Is that what I'm saying? No. That is not at all what I'm saying. What I am saying, however, is if God calls you to sell everything that you own and go to a foreign land to profess His name and live the rest of your days in pain and poverty, you better be ready to do it. You've got to be ready to go. That's where your heart should be. That is what it means to truly follow Christ. Not only knowing intellectually that Christ is the most precious possession, but then living our lives as if we actually believe it. Philippians 3.8 Paul said, Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For His sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. I pray that one day that that is our heart's desire. That everything we have, when we put it up into the light of Christ and we compare it to Christ, it, it literally looks like trash. I know for me that would make it a whole lot easier to toss out. But I pray that that would be our hearts. So another year has come. And another year has gone. And we're starting another year. 2014. And I want to ask you, because Jesus has done everything for you, because He has done everything in order to bring you back to Himself, when He says, follow me, will you do it? Will you do it? Are you ready to reprioritize your life to put Christ in? At the top. I, I think of my own, when I'm writing this, I, I, I can only do some self examination. Uh, and I think, you know, where really do my priorities lie? And in this order, I have work. My, my family isn't even first, I have my family is next. And then sleep, of course. I do a lot of that. And then my, my, my selfish indulgence, my entertainment. And then sadly, naps. I, I take a lot of naps. I love naps. And, and then God. I mean, He didn't even, if I'm honest with myself, He didn't even make it onto this first hand of priorities. And I wish I could sit up here and tell you, no, you know, God is, is number one to me. But I look at where I actually spend my time and my efforts. And this God who has done everything for me, He didn't even make it onto this hand. 
I, I am so done with living my life like that. I'm done with being content in, in just prioritizing God wherever, wherever He may fall in line. I want so much to put God at the very forefront. To seek His will out before I seek anything else. To follow Christ, we must realize that is the call to deny ourselves every single day. It is the call to seek out His will, to seek out His path every single day. I pray that God would give us faith in this, that that He would instill His power in us to do it. Because when you think about doing that, you, you, you almost set yourself up for failure like it's impossible. But nothing is impossible with God. If you seek Him out, if you pray, if you plead with God, I have to plead with God to give me a heart that wants to pray. Because I, I, I find myself wanting to pray maybe at the very end of the night, again when I'm falling asleep or I make up excuses. Plead with God. If you don't already have a heart that seeks Him out in prayer, plead that you would. Because if we want to do these things, if we want to be new creatures, new creations for Christ, and we want to go out into His mission field and we want to be transformed, and you don't fall on your knees before God then you're saying you don't really need His his help, His provisions, His assistance. I know nobody would actually say that they don't need God's help, but again, if you want to do these things and you aspire to do these things and you're not crying out to Him, that's exactly what you're saying. Again, I have been so burdened. I didn't sleep at all last night. I've been so burdened for this year. I've been so burdened for my own walk, my my family's walk with Christ. And I I feel like God is just asking me to give Him everything in this year. To dedicate this year to following Him as my first priority. Because He can drastically, He can drastically change my heart. I want that, you guys. I want that more than I can express to you with words. What if we as a body dedicated this entire year to Christ? And I know we want to dedicate every year. We want to dedicate the life of the church, our entire lives. We want to dedicate everything to Christ. But I'm talking about this year. What if we just focused on this year and we said, You know what? I don't know what's going to come after this, but God, I'm giving you everything. And I don't know how that's going to look in your own individual life. But God, we share the same spirit. And I know He will let you know. But if we were to humble ourselves and to give Him all of us in order to follow Him the way that He has truly called us to follow Him, that would be incredible. What if we got extreme for God this year? What if we did those extreme things? I already revealed to you, sadly, that sleep and naps are high on my priority. What if we gave up some of that sleep and we woke up early and we got on our knees and we prayed to God? We sought out His wisdom. What if we gave up some of those things that we desire to do, those things that bring us joy, and we follow Him instead? Because He has a a purpose for you to go out into His mission field and reach the lost. What if we gave up some of the things that we want in order to follow God? I pray that God is moving in this place. And I pray that God is softening hearts and that God is is really calling you to want to do more. And if you I mean if you have it all together in your Christian walk, I'm not I'm not talking to you today. 
But if, if there's a part in your walk that you just feel like something is missing, that you're holding on to something, and you want to let it all go so that you can follow Christ, I mean, He could do so much. He could do so much if we would just let Him use us individually. And then if He uses us individually, that kind of extreme, in that extreme way, can you imagine what He would do as a body of believers that unite for one cause to glorify our God? If you do feel like you want something more, I want to ask you to stay after church. And I, I, I'd want to meet maybe 10 minutes after the service ends. And uh, let's get together and let's pray on this. And let's be serious. If, if you want to give this year to God just to see what He could do, let's do it. And if, if you don't, then that's fine. But I feel like if, if you can come and we can pray, it's going to set the tone for this entire year. It could set the tone for the entire year. So if we have five people, that's fine. If we have 50 people, that's great. If every person here wants to follow Christ the way that He designed it because we are missing out on His blessings every day that we don't, then I encourage you to please stay. And let's pray for each other because we can only do it by His sovereign grace. So Christ has issued that calling to all of us. He's lived this perfect life. He's sacrificed. I mean, our God came from everything that He created down to this earth. And then He lived and He sacrificed and He died for you and me. And He turns to us and He just asks, follow me. And this year, will you do it?